Have you ever had the problem of making something look beautiful on desktop and then you switch over to mobile and it just looks horrible? I know I have. Now, if you use pixels, you can go in and re-enter new values, but this takes up a lot of time and it isn't automatically responsive. And besides, something that you make look great on an iPhone 10, for example, can still look pretty bad on an iPhone 8. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your website properly responsive so that it sizes correctly for any device. My name is Jack. Welcome to the Jack in the Net channel. Now, let's look at how to make your website properly responsive without using any code and saving you a lot of time going forwards. The first thing you need to know is that there are absolute units and relative units. Pixels are absolute units, fixed units of measurement that are good for things that should not be resized. This makes them bad for being responsive across devices. Relative units are better across different devices and screen sizes because they can scale up and down according to size. Let's start with font size. For most browsers, the default font size is 16 pixels. When you use relative units, they use this as their base point to start their calculations. So using 16 pixels as our example, let's see what some relative units do to it. 1 EM is 1 times 16 pixels, so 16, whereas 2 EM is 2 times 16, so it would make it the equivalent of 32 pixels, whereas 0.5 would be half, so only 8 pixels. REM works in the same way, and percent as well, so 200% is the same as 32 pixels, and 50% is 8 pixels. Now, because these are relative units, if you change the default font size, the final size values will be based off of the new size. So if your new font size was 18 pixels, then 1EM is 18 pixels, 2EM is 2 times 18, so 36 pixels, and so on and so forth. The same with REM, the same with percentages as well. You can change your default font size across your website using your theme if you're using Gutenberg or in global settings if you're using Elementor. And if you are using Elementor and like to see how to use the global settings, I have a separate video that shows you how to do it. In fact, it actually won Elementor's own competition for the best tutorial, which I'm very proud of and grateful once again to everybody who supported the channel. So if you'd like to watch that video and see how to use their global settings, I'll put the link in the description below. Now, Font sizes are controlled with either pixels, EM, or REM, and sometimes VW. Now don't worry, because it does it all for you, but just so you know, REM makes its calculations based on the default setting of your website. EM is based on the size of its parent, uh, because you can change different elements individually to be different from the website default. Now, VW stands for viewport width and means that the size will change depending on the width of the viewable screen. So if I set this to five and then change between desktop, tablet and mobile, you see that it changes automatically without me having to edit each one manually. So what exactly is VH and VW? VH is viewport height. 100% of viewport height means it takes up 100% of the height of the screen no matter how big the screen is. VW is viewport width and it's the same. 100% VW is 100% the width of a screen. And it adjusts to the size of the screen automatically, no matter what device it's on. This is how you get truly responsive design. Because you're not using pixels, you don't have to manually change it for every device. Another way to think of it is that viewport units are calculated as a percentage of screen size. So let's say we had a mobile screen that was 480 pixels by 800 pixels. Then 1VW is 1% 1 of the viewport's width, or 1% of our example of 480, so 4.8. Whereas 50VW is 50% 50 of the viewport's width, so 240. Likewise, for viewport height, 1VH is 1% of the height, so in our example it would be 1% of 800 pixels, so 8 pixels, and 50VH is 50% 50 of the viewport's height, so 400 pixels. But again, it automatically changes for different screen sizes. Unlike sections, columns are adjusted in percent, so if I add in multiple columns, we can change the values of each one individually. You see the others automatically adapt there, but we could change those around as well. Now, 
Under the margins or padding, it's better to use percent again instead of pixels so that everything on your page stays relative in size when switching between devices because 100 pixels of space is much bigger on a mobile than it is on a desktop, so it wouldn't look right. That's why you want to be using percent. So, although there are exceptions, you should keep away from pixels whenever you're trying to design something that needs to resize itself across devices. Instead, use VH or VW or percent when you're controlling the structure of your website, like your hero images, your columns, or the size of your margins and padding. And for fonts, once you've set your default font size, which you can do in your theme if you're using Gutenberg, or inside the settings of most page builders, once you've set that default font size, stick to using EM or REM, and that way it's going to be so much easier and all sized properly across devices. Thank you very much for watching this. I really hope that it's helped you. Please consider subscribing and, of course, liking the video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.